Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is August 22nd, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I'm going to provide an update both of the present U.S. drought situation in particular, focusing in on the U.S. West, but also looking ahead at potential trends that, that may impact the U.S. drought situation in the future in the coming months. But before I do that, I'd like to provide a bit of an overview of the some, some of the drought hotspots around the world just to provide an indicator that the Western drought in the U.S. is not occurring in isolation and in general to note that human-caused climate change does increase the risk and severity of drought by increasing both temperatures and the rate of evaporation in certain regions and that in general we tend to see worsening in impacts from drought through the amplification of the hydrological cycle at, of about seven to eight percent which e each with each degree celsius of warming globally so there are a number of drought hotspots around the world i'm just going to look at some headlines so presently, according to this new report in The Guardian today, Sweden's reindeer are now at risk of starvation after summer drought, and indigenous herders are urging the state to help mitigate the impact of climate change in the Arctic. It's also worth noting that Australia is being devastated by an ongoing drought but despite the impacts which are related to human-caused climate change, the political situation in Australia is still one primarily where climate change deniers and or fossil fuel supporters still dominate the government, which is a very harmful political situation for Australia because it puts, it puts Australia further and further behind the eight ball when it comes to climate change, not just with regards to drought, but with other impacts such as those to the barrier, barrier Reef. It also appears that there is a tragedy unfolding as the worst drought in decades grips two-thirds of Afghanistan with two million people now at risk. So just an overview of, of the global drought situation and global hotspots. It's not a complete overview but just to give you guys an idea that the present situation for the U.S. West is not occurring in isolation, that there are many climate change related droughts or droughts that are being enhanced by human caused climate change, in particular, increasing temperatures and increasing rates of evaporation in various parts of the world. Now for the U.S., the Western two thirds of the country are experiencing mostly dry conditions with severe drought in impacting parts of Texas and the Midwestern states just west of the central Mississippi River Valley. But in particular, the West itself, including the Rockies and the Pacific coastal region are experiencing the most intense drought signals at present. It's worth noting that Upwards of 47.5 million people are now affected by drought across the U.S. West alone, with the worst drought conditions of impacting regions of Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona. It's also worth noting that dry conditions across the U.S. West, in particular in Northern California, Oregon, and Washington, as well as Montana and Idaho, are amplifying wildfire risks across the U.S. West and contributing to a very extreme wildfire outbreak, which presently is affecting air quality in many locations. I'd like to just drill down and provide for you a, an overview of some of the situation for Oregon, which is particularly acute. And I'm just gonna go ahead and read a statement from the U.S. Drought Monitor. Lowering stream flows and reservoir storage and increased fuel load for wildfires caused by unusually warm temperatures, increased drought stress in western Idaho, 
In Oregon, during years with poor winter snowpack and hot and drier than normal conditions, the water systems for the smaller communities are stressed and run out of water. These water systems are stretched even in good years now. As noted by the Oregon State Climate Office, a town in Baker County is running out of water and imposing fines on watering and having water shipped in. According to the August 12th U.S. Department of Agriculture reports, 63% of pasture and rangeland in Oregon was in poor to very poor condition, and 90% of the topsoil and 88% of the subsoil was short or very short of moisture, dry to very dry, in southwestern Oregon. Many ranchers reported pastures one half of, at one half of normal production, creeks dried up, and several were, were reported at lower levels than observed in previous drought years. And as noted by NDMC, the dry summer in Pleasant Hill, Oregon, in the Pleasant Hill, Oregon area has taken a toll on saplings and prevented even mature Christmas trees from growing. So just, just a sample of, of some of the severe drought impacts that are presently ongoing across the U.S. West. I'm going to go ahead and look at Oregon a little bit more just to give you an idea of recent year drought coverage for Oregon. And we see that for the most part, Oregon has experienced drought for most of the past five years. So, so pretty clear indication of drying out west. Systemic drying and continuous drying in large part due to impacts precipitated by human-caused climate change, primarily warming of western, state, western states and increasing temperatures. Now looking ahead, it appears that we have persistent high pressure ridge systems developing in the Pacific and, and over the US West over the past months. And this trend, at least for the next week or so, appears likely to continue. According to NOAA reports, moisture is, it could potentially flow into some of the Western states, although the recent forecasts are less optimistic for the potential for rain in the Northwest than from yesterday. And it looks like the region from California running in through much of Washington and Nevada is unlikely to get precipitation or, or significant precipitation over the coming week. Looking further into the future, there are some NOAA models that are showing that parts of the Southwest, particularly in Arizona and New Mexico, may receive some increased levels of moisture. But it's worth noting that the high predicted sea surface temperatures and high sea surface temperatures anomalies in the Northeast Pacific will tend to help to generate ridge patterns through this region. Now, this particular analysis can be taken with a grain of salt because we are looking into the future here. But if predicted sea surface temperature values do emerge, as indicated by the CFS V2 model, then it's likely that we will see the, the tendency for ridge patterns to continue across the U.S. West, which may also continue to push conditions that generate prevailing drought. So just a general overview of present conditions across the U.S. West, which is now experiencing rather severe drought conditions, and a look ahead at a potential for the persistence and the prevalence of, of high pressure systems and ridge systems that will tend to generate drought conditions in the future. It's worth noting in general that climate scientists and climatologists have indicated a vulnerability for the West as the earth warms for drought. And unfortunately, it appears that this vulnerability is emerging with increasing frequency. Thank you for joining me, and I'll be chatting with you soon.